Hi there, my name is Vitan, or you can call me Vito, like all my close friends do. So if you want to be a close friend. Today, I've chosen to read to you a short story from the book, The Best of Five Minute Mysteries by Ken Weber. Ken Weber is a self-confessed trivia freak and a puzzle nut. And he's an internationally best-selling author of more than 40 educational and general interest titles, which have sold more than a million copies worldwide and have been published in 12 languages. Now, before I start reading to you the mystery story, which I love mystery stories, here's an opportunity for you to use your powers of observation, deduction, to apply your detective skills and to test out how well you can sift through the facts. Now, your active listening and active participation is a must. Because at the end of each story, the author posts a question which I will ask you. And it is imperative for you to put that answer in the comment section below so that we can finish and solve the story together. So sit comfortably and listen closely. The Prowler on Burley Court. Code three meant he did not have to rush, but Sean Dormand put the red light on the roof anyway. He didn't use the siren, however. There was no need at 3 a.m. Code three meant gunfire with death or injury. It also meant situation over or well in hand so that officers responding need not endanger themselves or the public getting to the scene. But as inspector, Sean was the active ranking officer at that time of the morning. And since the reports were eventually going to go out over his signature, he wanted to review the scene himself. The coroner's car along with two black and whites and an ambulance, had already filled the driveway by the time Sean arrived, so he parked on the street. Burley Court was a cul-de-sac with only six houses, all of them large and custom-built. There was money here. Sean was met on the sidewalk by two of the uniformed men, who took him past the yellow tape barrier and into the house. Everything's in place, Inspector. We got word you were coming. Detective Aland was waiting for him at the front hallway. Victim isn't there. He jerked his thumb toward an open door. Here's the weapon. Lalonde held up a clear plastic bag with a revolver inside. Three shots. Sean could see three shell casings that looked to be a 38 caliber. And the perp's in that room. We've got the story. Everything's clean. We're just waiting for you to give it a name. Murder, manslaughter, self-defense, or accident. Let's see the body first, Sean said, brushing past the lawn and through the doorway to where the coroner, Jim Tate, was waiting for him. Meet the former John Mark Lavalier, Tate said grimly. He pulled back the sheet to reveal a very bloody corpse. Sean leaned closer to compensate for the poor lighting. Lavalier's body was lying on its back. He appeared to have been in his mid-thirties, athletic and quite handsome. The tracksuit he wore looked brand new. Sean crouched down and flicked several shards of glass off of Lavalier's chest for a better look at the wound. The window directly above had been smashed and pieces of glass were spread all over this part of the room. Seems like you came in that way, Tate nodded at the broken window. Anyway, she must have nailed him right away. She? Sean looked up. Yeah, Tate said. The perp, uh, Miss Dina White. You haven't spoken to her yet? 
I, I didn't realize. Sean didn't say anything. He was known as a man of very few words. So Tate just kept on talking. Anyway, they were partners, she and Lavalier. Advertising business. But according to her, things were going, weren't going so well. Apparently he's a drinker, this guy. Or was. They had been having quite an argument over it for several weeks. Sean just nodded. Anyway, he smashed the window to get in. I suppose we'll never know why. Maybe he was drunk. I'll autopsy that, though. We'll know that by tomorrow. Anyway, she thought he was a prowler. And bingo! Three right in the chest. Suppose you can't blame her, really. A woman living alone. Your window gets smashed in at night. She must have been awfully frightened. Sean nodded again. Anyway, I can't move the remains here till you say so. Are you going to give it a name? Accident, justifiable homicide? There was a long pause when Tate stopped, each man waiting for the other to speak. Homicide, yes, said Sean, breaking the silence, but just barely. He shook his head, but not justifiable. No, I don't think so. Now the question for you is, what has led Sean to suspect murder? I'd like you to give your answer in the comments section below. And be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for listening.